Warning, us writers are always plotting. So who are the writers behind the writers of meaning? What are they doing behind the scenes? Have any of us ever written about macaroni? Mm. How did this grand conspiracy to do a book to raise funds for Paul's ministry start? Who wrote the pieces on estuary? What are some of the Bridges of Meaning members doing that help in this conspiracy? What odd questions will we be asking each other? Join us for the Conspiracy Crew Chat! Yay! Hi guys, how you doing? Doing alright. All right. Thanks for uh, g- taking time out of your schedule to do this. And so we're, ex- we're going live, ex- explaining all this wonderful stuff to everybody. So first I'd like to introduce the, the big guys behind the scenes. Josh is uh, a fantastic writer. And he is also the, the gentleman who started the writer's group on the writer's server. Um, and Jordan is the key man who thought up the idea, the originator, the instigator of the conspiracy. And um, he is also a wonderful writer. Um, and I'm really glad to be part of the team here and uh, trying to make things go, you know, do some fun stuff. So I have some questions here to get us started. And then we'll play around with them. So, Josh, since you're the first guy uh, who's, you know, corralled us all, all, all of us writers together, um, could you give us a little background on your writing journey and how your life experience influenced your writing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, my uh, early experiences with writing were in grade school and, and high school when I was given writing assignments, which I usually didn't do or if i did do i would wait till the the night before and try and bs the whole thing and so i didn't really like doing it so it was something that i kind of uh i I suppose kind of stumbled on a few years back that when i was starting to choose to read for my own personal education and look at certain writers that I I wanted to write myself to try to organize my own thoughts and understand what I think myself. And so that I think was a lot of the inspiration for putting a sort of a shout out on Discord to see if anyone else was interested in trying to regularly meet together and try to exercise the the skill or the the ability to write however you want to look at it and 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 try and utilize that as a as a regular tool and somebody i was looking for someone else to exercise it with and if other people have other things in mind, I you know Jordan is probably a little more serious about it, maybe looking to potentially do it professionally or or as a source of income. I've kind of always looked at it as more of an amateurish thing. I, I kind of look at myself as kind of a layman when it comes to writing, but um, I, I certainly always like it if other people appreciate it in some way of what I put out kind of strikes a chord with someone else or or is appreciated that uh it's kind of a, a feel good sort of thing and uh who knows I, I don't know where it'll go with me but that's where i am with writing cool thank you very much josh uh jordan i'll pick on you now uh would you like me to read the question again or are you are you good no well, just our general history with writing right um let's see i Kind of maybe opposite of Josh. I uh, kind of fell in love with writing back in school. Um, I want to say it was as early as second or third grade. I uh, I developed a love for reading, and then one day um, had the like an epiphany almost, uh, at least epiphany to a, a kid that oh someone has to write these things, these books, so I can do that too, and this started from there and wrote off and on over the years through school and through college and then after graduating started uh picking it up more trying to get some stuff on the internet uh looking into self-publishing and all that and uh one day just kind of 
wandered into this server, I guess, and yeah. met you guys. Yeah. We are very glad to meet you. We're very happy. Well, thank you guys very much. Let me go to the next question, and I have to find my mouse because it has mysteriously disappeared. Okay. Um, other than writing, what are some of your hobbies and interests for both of you guys? I'll pick on Josh first. <laughs> yeah. Unless you need more time. <laughs> uh, no, no, I play guitar a little bit. Um, again, pretty, pretty amateurish with that. Um, uh, it's something. It's an instrument I always liked. Uh, what else do I do? Uh, I kind of grew up when I was younger with hobby. What I would call hobby farming, and so I kind of engaged in that a little bit. I have chickens, kind of like backyard flock of chickens. Um, I I currently live on property that is um, an old family property. It was my grandparents back in the day. And so I own, I own the house that my dad grew up in. It's not the house I, I live in, but it is on the property. So there's a couple houses here. And so there's a lot of nostalgia for me. I, I look out the windows in the morning and I see, I see a uh, space where I played as a kid. So, um, Am I straight from your question? I forget what what exactly you asked about hobbies, didn't you? Hobbies and pastimes, kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I'm straying a little bit, but um, no, I, I I guess maybe I look at uh, a lot of my life as more more a way of life rather than hobbies. I I, I guess maybe I've uh, in my own mental space kind of moved away from looking at the things I do that don't make money is something different than um, a hobby or just a pastime, but rather uh, I've maybe tried to look at it in a more holistic way as a part of myself somehow. So maybe I kind of take writing that way, even though it's not something that I take um, as a, as some sort of money making thing or an income in some way. For myself I, I don't look at it that way but i still look at it as kind of maybe a small part of myself um, mm. so i don't know i guess i'll pass on uh, from okay, there no, i'm not sure if that's too confusing of an answer but uh that's all right thank you <laughs> so jordan uh, interesting yeah. hobbies other than writing um i don't know how interesting they are but um i like to cook, uh, try new recipes and uh, all sorts of stuff like that. I'll, uh, in the warmer months, uh, taking up gardening, um, just uh, like the fresh vegetables and fruits and stuff. Mm. Um, and, you know, the typical video games, cool. uh, reading kind of stuff you might expect. That's about it. Cool. Awesome. Um, so I want to explore a little bit about, you, you actually are a self-published author, and uh, you have several books out in there, both uh, in book form and in online and stuff. Um, so you're kind of like the go-to guy to actually, you know, help us do this project. Um, but uh, what are the books about, and where, I, if you can send me the links, I'll put it in the show notes of... You know, so if you could tell us a little bit about the books that you already done, that would be, I'm sure, you know, we're all interested in that. Yeah, um, the two that are published right now, the first one is a novella uh, titled Order. Uh, and it's actually my first one. So looking back, I, you, know, you look back at your old work and you're like, oh, I could have done better. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but it's a more of a sci-fi story uh, taking place between basically there's like a mountain with a city on it and then another city around the mountain. And you do, it goes through like a Romeo and Juliet style mm. setup where a person from one world meets the other and mm. uh, not so much romance, but that same kind of you know, two different worlds meeting. Mm. Uh, then my other book published is titled The Nonpareil of Resh, which is 
the first of an ongoing series, um, more science fantasy, I would say, also falling into isekai or portal fantasy uh, genre. Um, basically, guy goes to this alien world and um, the whole series will follow his journey as well as some of the other characters' journeys as, as I think I titled in one of my synopses, conspiracies start unfolding and um, the main character in particular learned, has to learn to be a hero. Mm. Cool. So um, let me check my notes here real quick. Um, as you can tell, I'm not the professional interviewee, interviewer. Um, so let's get into the conspiracy that we started. So I tell the story on some of the live streams and the um, videos that it, uh, pe kind, people kindly had me on about community and all that kind of stuff. From your perspective, let's start with you, Jordan. Um, what? How did? How did this little idea turn into this great big conspiracy with all of us? You know, conspiring to do the you know, do good for the world and Paul's ministry. Mm -hmm. What? What? How did? How did it like shape itself from your perspective? Um. Well, I guess the idea really first started uh, with me just trying to think of some fun things that we might be able to do on the writer server as kind of a group project. Um, and having self-published before I came to the idea, what if we did an anthology, uh, we could all put pieces together and then we can put it up online and it'd be kind of almost official. Uh, and then that's really where it started. Um, I brought the idea to you guys and some of the other guys uh, in the server and seemed to click. And uh, we decided to basically take it even further, uh, came up with a theme of community, and uh, now we're here. Cool. So, Josh, from your, your perspective, what were your first thoughts when Jordan told us the idea and and then how it kind of grown over time. Well, I welcomed it at first because uh, when I first put a put a shout out on Discord, seeing if there was people interested in trying to get together and form some sort of writing group, it was welcome to me because it seemed to be a thing that it could give purpose and direction and and i think it's done that i think it's done that fairly well and i i i think that's pretty much overall sums up my main thoughts on it. i have other feelings on it i have feelings of um I don't know what kind of questions really, because it's all new to me. I never would have thought that even starting this whole thing where I was looking to see if there were other people interested in meeting regularly to do writing things, writing, writing stuff, talk about writing and, and share, share stuff that had been worked on that it would lead to something like this. So it's, a pleasant surprise to me. Um, so how, what has it been like for each of you? know, for me, I'm like more of the PR gal trying to promote everything, but you guys are like in different aspects of the project. What has it been like, like interacting and writing the project and like going to the editing stage and all that stuff. What what are your thoughts on that? I, I guess I have a pretty short answer on that. I didn't know how that all worked before. It was all something to me. I was just like, yeah, whatever. I, I think my personality is kind of like, well, sure. I've stumbled my way through things before where Maybe I shouldn't have been doing it, meaning I don't have the the expert 
expertise or um, the background that would seem to justify it or um, make it something likely for for success. But um, with this, I wasn't even really concerned with the success side of it, um, for one, other than, I don't know, I, I, I guess my way of judging success, and now that I bring it up, it would be just somebody else is interested in it in some way it um even if it sparks interest for one other person then fine I, i'm happy with that but i don't know i i said i was going to make a short answer of it my, i'm kind of giving a rambling answer so okay. <laughs> so i'll just be done <laughs> yeah that's all right so what do you what has it been like you're kind of the head person in charge of everything and like the creative director of the project and you're like dealing with everybody so what is that like for you um it's i mean it's been pretty good i cool. first time kind of uh, working on a writing project in a group like this uh, so it's definitely been a little learning experience especially trying to make sure i stay up to date with where everyone is with their piece pieces uh, during the writing stage and make sure I stay uh, in contact with everyone regularly, make sure they're, they don't need anything or they're not struggling with anything uh, with, uh, with the project and offering help where I can. Uh, so it's definitely a lot, have, has been a lot to learn. Uh, so like my own projects, I've, you know, it's just me. So. I send it off to the editor and I get the thing back and I go, okay, it's good. <laughs> yeah. So what are some of the things that you've learned from doing the boot project that is different than your learning curve of self-publishing? Yeah, uh, definitely time uh, management and um, especially with all of us being more volunteering for this project, uh, everything's going to be donated. So it's not, um, necessarily everyone's number one priority uh, with uh, just daily life maybe getting in the way. Yeah. Um, so just learning to how to schedule things and how to be flexible with schedules mm. uh, was a big learning for me. Yeah. Uh, that's the one that uh, really stands out. Yeah. That's a challenge, time management. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about uh, your pieces and the, I, I don't want you to give spoilers, but maybe like explain a little bit what your pieces are. So Josh wrote an interesting piece about alchemy and I'm like, please explain that. <laughs> I'm like, I read it. It's fantastic. I'm like, well, this is neat. Um, uh, but how did you come up with, you know, what went into your mind, like why you wanted to write about alchemy, and then if you could summarize without spoiling it? I don't know if you can. I, I didn't give you much lead time on that question. <laughs> uh, so why the interest in alchemy? Well, I think that comes through through coming into contact with certain thinkers and ideas that are tangentially related to Carl Jung. And Jung was interested in alchemy. And somewhere along the line, I kind of came across some YouTube videos, kind of went down the YouTube rabbit hole of looking into alchemy to a certain extent. I don't know how deep exactly I went down the rabbit hole, but somewhere in there, I was seeing connections with... Oh, how do I put this without... I'm struggling to think of how to summarize it in a concise way, but I saw connections with uh, with religious behavior, maybe put it that way, and was also specifically seeing connections with Christian religious rituals. And so maybe I'll leave it there. I guess if I'm just looking to do a teaser for the piece and... Yeah. So. Now, some th some like like Christian and alchemy just sounds like heretical stuff, but it's not. I I promise you, it's not. It's interesting, <laughs> but you have to you have to su support the book, and uh, you know, buy the book and support Paul's ministry. Um, 
Uh, but let's go to Jordan because he actually wrote a narrative um, for the piece, for the uh, anthology. And maybe you can give a quick summary and a, and a teaser about what you wrote. I really liked it. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I'm trying to figure out how to summarize it in a teaser way. <laughs> okay. You know, yeah, um, I didn't give you much time. I didn't. Yeah. I'm no, sorry. No. So this one is a series of journal entries uh, following the writer. Basically, it's kind of vague in the story, uh, but basically after the initial couple days uh, of an alien invasion, um, and then they, I don't know how much I want to say. <laughs> it's, it, it, but, yeah. Kind of a group gets thrown together and has to learn to work together. Uh, but through what the um, narrator describes in the first entry as only having five pages to write this story down. It was it was very fascinating. It's it got a whole arc in it, and it's it's like what's going to happen. Who are these people, and what is going on? And it keeps you enraptured to the whole thing. And I'm like, I really enjoyed reading it. It was, it was really well written. Um, so that was fun. Um, so I, um, forcing these guys to talk because, like, you guys don't know who these people are, and they're awesome people. Um, but uh, to answer a couple of my little own questions, uh, my writing journey is I used to work with my dad, uh, who was an actor, writer, director. Um, he wrote mostly screenplays and scripts for voiceover and um, TV and video and that kind of stuff. Um, he also acted and he directed. Um, so I always uh, supported him as a uh, media production, uh, production manager, co-producer kind of thing. Um, so I, I, didn't, I didn't know all the tech the stuff. I'm more the administrative kind of person. And so doing all this is a learning curve for me. Um, and uh, I, sadly, my dad passed away back in you know, 2011, changed our lives. We kind of settled down, took care. We all have health issues, so we take care of each other. And I was writing some fan fictions. I know that's really big. So I was more like Josh, and I was writing for my own amusement and my own edification, um, helping with emails and all that kind of stuff. Um, part of my writing journey with my dad is that I would help proof uh, some of his pieces, whether they be a screenplay or an email or you know a script, uh, looking for typos and stuff, but mostly giving him feedback. So I was very used to the, the cycle of writing and giving feedback constantly as I grew up. As a, as, a, as a young child to um, adulthood. And uh, so I, I kind of learned it from that perspective. Um, and I had my little fan fiction that I wrote, you know, just for myself um, and posted on online. And it was, it was terrible. <laughs> it's really terrible, but I enjoyed it. Um, but uh, back in 2020, in October, my mom was like, you know, you should write. You just right. I'm like, okay. My mom was my dad's writing partner. I have a little blog post talking about, you know, the next piece. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes so you can go read it if you want. Um, but it kind of tells the story of more in depth of the story of my mom and me and writing and all that kind of stuff. So I just enjoyed, I was just doing blog posts and trying to force myself to write blog posts for my website. And um, I'm sort of better, not very much. Um, but uh, so uh, Jordan came along with this fantastic idea and I'm like, oh, this is so cool. I get to be an author. <laughs> I'm like, so I wrote three pieces for it. Um, one was, I, I'm, I have very, I have a lot of diverse interests. And so I'm constantly in many different communities, both online and in, in real life. And so I wrote, my first piece was about, um, let me make sure I say it right, Geeks, Rabbits, and Meaning. 
So that's all the different communities and where it led in the arc. And uh, the second piece was uh, my family and I also have uh, a disability, so vision and, and hearing disabilities. And uh, so I, and then also my whole family has a lot of health issues. And so I am very cognitive on the theme of community, how difficult it is for disabled folks to be actually participants of community, not only in the vision and hearing dynamic of being able to just talk with people and be in a group of people, sometimes in a large group, it's very hard to hear. For me, I can't, uh, it's even harder for my mom. Um, and uh, so I talked about uh, the challenges for disabled people to join community, not that the people are actively trying to keep them out, their own bodies are working against them, not only to facilitate communication, but also to actually go to different events. Just getting out of the house to go to a doctor's office is a big ordeal sometimes, for depending on somebody's uh, uh, physical conditions. And so I thought I need to, I want to raise awareness for this to people that understand. Um, not as like, oh, uh, oh, poor us kind of thing. It's like, these are some challenges that we're dealing with, you know, just be cognitive and help us work around, you know, like giving us rides would be a big help. <laughs> um, but uh, the third piece is, ironically, this is going to sound weird, but is on the uh, emergency preparedness. Uh, for 30, 40 plus years, I've been involved with emergency preparedness. I am not some you know, super duper prepper person. I'm just cognitive that things can go wrong. I tell my little story in the, in the piece. And um, I talk about the history of emergency preparedness over the last 30 to 40 years of the arc of, you know, conspiracy theories, tinfoil hats to like, oh, we need to have a fire extinguisher in our house. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, and the, the, the arc that has come, um, and I have some resources in the in the uh, in the piece, and it's my longest piece, I think. <laughs> um, but it's also talking about community in the self-reliant um, emergency preparedness. You know, people think, oh, just a lone man, a homesteader, on their own. Yes and no. A lot of emergency groups uh, get together and form clubs where they help each other get prepared with a little more food or water purifier or, or you know remem remembering to stock up on medicine um you can actually stock up on medicine like for uh 9 30 um i think it's three months depending on your prescription insurance thing so if you have some extra medicine around because if you have a big snowstorm uh or something takes out the grid for like a week or two and you're out, almost out of your medicine it's good to have extra medicine on hand uh, until the infrastructure comes back online. Um, so these are some thoughts that I thought of, and I was actually talking about how, um, I know, big spoiler here, is the self-reliant community uh, is not just a bunch of lone rangers. they are people who actually gathered together and helped each other, and uh, it never was a lone ranger thing. I mean, some people are. They're just their personality and stuff. Um, uh, but, uh, so that was the little arc and stuff on it, but it was a little bit interesting. I'm probably giving too many spoilers, sorry. Um, <laughs> I broke my own rule. But a little bit about me, my writing journey, and uh, how I became involved. I was thrilled that I could be a part of an actual book project uh, with, you know, uh, my own community in Bridge of the Meaning and the Writers Center. Um, I get along really great with Josh and Jordan. It's like, it, you know, I'm used to being the odd person out um, uh, because media tend to be more liberal and more woke. And I've dealt with that for over 30 plus years. Um, I love, you know, people. Um, I have a lot of, you know, liberal and moderate friends, probably more than conservative. But um, it's nice to just be hanging out with these guys in the writers group and just like, yeah, blah, 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 and shoot the breeze and, and actually, you know, have a shared experience of where we come from, even though we're very different people. Um, so I, I, the, 
there's a lot of, I, I hate to say the term, but there's a lot of diversity <laughs> in the anthology. Um, so maybe we could talk a little bit about the book. Um, and because we have one guy who wrote a screenplay. And so that's really wild and different. Um, so maybe Jordan, um, you could tell us a little bit, of, you know more everybody's pieces than we do. Mm -hmm. but if you can, you know, like a quick, like bullet point list of like some of the different stories and um, pieces people did. Yeah, uh, let's see. I had made sure to pull it up ahead of time. To... So we have a, you know, we have a piece. Uh, I'll go just real high level bullet point. Uh, but we have a piece on uh, John Vadon's piece on estuary. We have uh, a piece um, about just this little corner of the internet and the writer's experience through it. Um, and we have a piece, um, I'll, uh, basically uh, kind of a, little community uh, the writer did with his wife uh, to uh, just take a prompt and write two pieces kind of as a group project. I should mention that is Chad the alcoholic and many people recognize him as one of the pillars so he kindly was like yes I want to be part of your project so we're happy to have him. Yes and then the screenplay as was mentioned earlier mm -hmm. I can. I don't know if we want to go into more depth about any of the pieces or um, open ended. Um, or... So, how many pieces did we have? I mean, how many people participated? Uh, was it nine or ten or uh, just for the writers? It yeah, was. the writers. Make sure that's right. He's looking no. it up for us. Yes. Nine writers, nine writers, uh, yeah, as well as quite a few proofreaders and um, our cover artist, who has been uh, I've been working back and forth with, mm -hmm. um, and many others who have uh, generously helped and donated. Yeah. So let me. Um... Probably a good segue into talking about the current status of what everything is at, and how people can be a part of the pro, uh, the conspiracy, the conspiracy. Yes, you can do good with us too, you know. Conspiracy for the good. Um, so those who are stumbled upon this and not sure what the, what, what what conspiracy are you talking about? So basically, this is a book that uh, that's an anthology that was uh, we all are volunteers. And we um, are creating a book to be a fundraising tool for Paul Vanderclay's ministry. We're from the Bridges and Meaning community. And one of the big things for us is uh, the uh, Bridges and Meaning was created to facilitate in real life community. And so we thought, uh, and also facilitates it online for those of us like me, who uh, there's no way I can actually have a real life estuary with anybody in the in the server um i just live too far away from everybody um but i i'm glad to participate in in promoting the estuary john van donk um did a piece on estuary and dan Viederman, if i'm saying his name right he's the one who wrote the article for the, the banner the crc uh, am i saying that right crc yeah i think so uh, the CRC uh, denomination that Paul is a member of. Um, and they wrote a, their magazine for the denomination wrote a piece on the estuary and our little corner of the internet. And, and it was a really fantastic piece. And the banner kindly gave us permission to include it in the, uh, in the anthology, which was fantastic. And so if you stay tuned, um, we, we will have an interview with Dan Wiedemann talking about his perspective from outside looking in. And he has an interesting bio. <laughs> he's like, he's from Canada and he's uh, 
he's also a um, very uh, eclectic background himself. Um, but uh, so what are we, where, where, how can you guys be, become part of this? Um, there's several different ways. Uh, we have a video talking about promoting uh, the project. Um, I'll just give a one one minute summary and let people point people to the website writersofmeaning.com. Um, we need uh, people who uh, can do honest reviews for us for Amazon and Goodreads and other places. Um, we also need someone to take on the uh, newsletter for us. Um, one of our uh, volunteers who uh, kindly snagged uh, the, the uh, what's it called, substack uh, for us, for Writers of Meaning, it was not taken. So we were like, whoa, okay, <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, so we have lots of people looking out for us and trying to help us in many different ways. Um, uh, we might need uh, extra graphic help, uh, depending on our graphic artist needs, um, but, uh, we'll, you know, stay in touch with us, stay in touch with Jordan. Uh, there's also a list on the website of how to join the project. Of course, we need money. It would be very, very helpful. Um, as I said in the promo video, the PSA, uh, most books that are professionally published, not self-published, some self-publishers do this because they have the, the funds to do it, but basically they need about a thousand to ten thousand or more dollars to just get the manuscript into uh, into a uh, form that most people recognize as uh, as a book uh, worthy of buying. So the in order it's uh, some of the expenses are just there's a whole bunch of different types of editing. There's line editing, there's development editing, and there's a bunch of, there's like nine different types of editing. Um, and we had two uh, editors, plus a lot of us writers going over our pieces numerous times um, to do the best we could. Um, there's also um, the, uh, the graphics. So some of the art pieces might need to be paid for, uh, even though our, our graphic artist is volunteer, she can't spot, you know, all the, uh, the different things to make layers to create the um, the cover. Um, we need the cover to be professionally designed so that it will sell. <laughs> so that would be important. Even though, as Josh said, most of us know it may not go, no, might not go anywhere. But for Paul's sake, we would like this to actually raise money for his ministry. And in order to do that, it needs to sell. In order to be, in order to sell, we need money to, in order to invest in creating, uh, also doing the formatting and all this kind of stuff. There's a bunch of stuff I got, I don't remember all the details, all, know, all on the website. But um, if you are able to put in five bucks or put in 200, you know, you know, whatever you can spend, you know, we don't want you to break the bank or anything. But um, we, this is our way of contributing to the community and to see this good natured um, free speech, uh, accepting people who they are, wherever they're coming from, what worldview they're coming from, and just have good faith conversations with them. Yes, you can have debates. I don't do participate in the debates, but you know, it's, um, you know, we love this. <laughs> we love Bridges of Meaning and we want to support it. And please help us to help you guys. Um, but um, yeah, so that's my little soapbox. I get off my soapbox now. Yeah, yeah. So um, did you guys have any uh, thoughts of, you know, I mean, this has gone a lot further than we thought it would. So it's kind of encouraging in a way. Uh, so many people have participated and joined the ranks and, you know, in helping to make this a reality. No, I don't think I have anything to add unless you've got any more specific questions. Um, let's see. Let me look at my notes. I do have our random questions. I did, I did tease at the beginning 
did anybody write anything about macaroni? No. Food stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't believe I have ever written anything about macaroni or, <laughs> no, no. or food these stuff are, in general. No. no. These are important questions. <laughs> we must know this. <laughs> I, I, I did write a piece uh, about no pickles. As, as a piece of called um, No Pickles in the Culture War. You know, it's on my blog. The, the closest food thing I've... No, no, I did write a, a banana piece, a bad banana. So I have two I have two pieces on food, but no macaroni. I'll have to keep that in mind for a future blog post. But, um, yes. So I have this really cool thing. These guys are not sponsors at all. They don't even know I exist. But this thing is called Chat Pack. So it's it's a little conversation starter, and I thought I'd end with, because they have interesting questions that make you think, and you're like, hmm, that's kind of cool. Um, so I'm going to take out a question here, uh, open the box, opening the box right now, and they have all these little cards in here. My, my little lid is coming apart, and um, so I got, I'll take a thing out. Uh, let me pick another one. Uh, let's see. Okay, here's something. It's a little card like this. If you could hear a speech from a leading figure in any field, whom would you choose to hear? Do, 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 do. Hmm. <laughs> uh, hear a speech by a leading figure. How restricted my time is this? Um, like it's got it somebody any, currently anybody, living. It could be anybody. It doesn't say. So it's, it's more to start conversations than worry about times and you know space and you know gravity and stuff like that you know physics <laughs> <laughs> well i feel like for me uh, assuming this is probably like live speech i would probably just go with one of the guys from this little corner like a peugeot or verveke or someone to you know see their speech live yeah that would be cool I asked about the time thing because I'm thinking of like big historic figures. I'm thinking, oh, what would it be like to uh, listen to to Moses give a sermon? Oh, or something like yeah. that. So, <laughs> yeah. That's my answer, that's, Moses. Cool. I don't know who I would pick. I mean, obvious, you know, uh, Peterson or uh, Paul Van, Van Clay just sitting there, sitting in his church and listening to a sermon and talking, being a funny Paul, funny and. Uh, Paul show that would be cool, um, but uh, let's see what else. Some anybody, anybody at all. I've always been fascinated by the widow and the two mites. I've always like wondered what her story is, so I just like to talk to her. I know she's not famous, a world leader or anything, but to me she's like, you know. But if I had to pick a leading. Figure, that's what the question says. I have to stick to the question, even though I have all, no physics. Um, leading figure. Hmm. I would like to talk to Charles William. He is an interesting, inkling writer, very esoteric. Um, it's probably the only horror I'll ever read, because I am a coward, but it is. It's full of archetypes and symbolism and all this kind of stuff. The, the Peugeot people would go crazy over it. It's like, and he's a Christian. And so it's like, what's this gothic horror thing going on, you know? Um, but I would be interested in just talking to him and getting to know him. Or just like seeing, seeing you know, being, uh, seeing one of his lectures or something. That would be kind of cool. I think uh, young women were captivated by him from what I have studied of him. That uh, yeah, he was a weird individual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I have he, one more uh, question. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, go no, go ahead. I was just gonna uh, kind of stray off into Charles Williams talk, but go ahead. Oh no, Charles <laughs> Williams talk. I'm totally open for that. He's a writer, so this, we're writers of meaning, and he was a writer of meaning. So let's talk about Charles William just for a little bit. Well, well yeah, talk about um, 
how he was liked as a lecturer. It, uh, from what I can recall, the accounts were that he could basically just, he just had a stream of consciousness that would come out. Uh, he would just kind of sit up on his, uh, his desk in the lecture hall and, and go on. Wow. But then he had a, a weird thing where he was, he was quite the romantic and even though he was married, I, from what I've, I've heard, there's no accusations of actually cheating on his wife, but really strange behavior, like engaging with uh, other women to the point of like picking on like women students and then spanking them for, you know, during oh, like wow. study sessions. And, and he was off into stuff. I, what was it called? I don't, um, hold it to this being quite correct but was it the order of the golden dawn or some sort of like a cultist group that he was involved in and and he held some sort of position in, but it was like one of these things where he liked all the the ritual and the, and the ceremony and putting on the robes and having titles and you know exercising kind of almost magic magical practice kind of stuff i i don't know i i that kind of is like the getting to the the edge of my knowledge of his his personal life but well, he's kind of the christian yeah. version of carl young <laughs> it's like, okay he's not a psychologist but he's like eccentric out there okay interesting i have to, I have to i'm like maybe i could just watch him on tv that would be safer <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, one more question. Um, okay, this is a. Uh, if you could create a memorial to yourself in a city park, what would the memorial be? Of course, I'm asking writers. Mm, you go first, Jordan. <laughs> I'm not sure I would want a memorial to myself, to be honest. Or just take it to the absurd. Make it like ridiculous. Hmm. I got nothing. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll go. I think uh, for me to get around the 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 hang up over feeling like it would be too arrogant or self-centered. I, I think uh, if there was something in my life that I could feel okay with it being portrayed to other people, it would be me at one of my better moments with my family. So if there were going to be a, a statue in a park, perhaps it would be some sort of scene with uh, me with my family. That's, that's, that's really classy. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, I have to answer this question, don't I? Because I'm the instigator here. Um, hmm. Let me think. I think I would like to have a prism. Because I am so multifaceted and eclectic in my interests and in my... Um, uh, my, pers you know, not, I don't have multiple personalities. I'm just like, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by learning about many different things. And I have so many different communities and stuff I'm part of. And uh, they're all like a facet of myself. So I was like, I can never, I can never find all of myself in one group of people. It's just, the, it was like a, a part of myself in different places. So a prism would probably be the best representation of who I am as a person, which nobody would know who I am, but prism, that's one of my thing. Yeah. I would, I would like to have some kind of sunlight come through where it makes a rainbow. Uh, so, um, one more for the road. Let's see if I can get something interesting. Okay. Here's an interesting one. Um, if you were completely blind, but could somehow see for just one hour each month, how would you most often spend that time? These are hard questions. They make you think.
Uh, that one, that one seems like it uh, requires the actual experience to honestly answer. I don't know. Uh, Jordan? I'm kind of in the same boat as Josh. Okay, I'll answer because I've thought about this one before. Because vision is a big thing in my family and my mom's legally blind. But I think I would actually read. I would spend some time with my mom and my family. And then I would just sequester myself and just read with my eyes a book, whether it be ebook or a physical book. And because I really love reading, <laughs> and I'm just like, I, it's hard for me to just listen to an audiobook, but I would have to get used to it. So that's for me. All right, let's do it up on a uh, let's up on an up note. Um, let's see something. Oh, here we're writers. This this should be fun. Okay, if you could enter a racehorse into in the Kentucky Derby, what would you name your horse? We're writers. We have to come up with absurd names for this. Okay, <laughs> it's like the challenge. I dare it, double dare you. <laughs> Oops, you went sideways. I don't know how to fix you. Oh, there you are. If I was naming a racehorse, I feel like it would be probably like a sci-fi reference or anime okay. reference. I don't know what the reference would be, but it would be something of that vein, something silly like that. You need more time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, if you think of the answer, let me know, and I will put it in the show notes. Because <laughs> writers, we need time to think of brilliant things. <laughs> How about you, Josh? Do you have any luck? Oh no! We lost uh, Josh. Oh no! Uh, let's see. Maybe I can pause and get him back. If I can get my mouse going here. Let's see. Yay! We got Josh back. Everything worked out. He had he had technical issues, but it might have been a conspiracy. So you need to donate to help us, so he doesn't disappear again. <laughs> so, um. The guys and I were talking, and they can't think of anything appropriate, family friendly. You know, they're thinking of all these other things. But I have something family friendly. It's inspired by Avatar. If any of you happen to know why it's Avatar, mine is Twinkle Toes. Twinkle Toes. So put it in the comments if you know why what that scene is. But um, this concludes my our random questions. Uh, getting to know the conspiracy crew behind the scenes. Oh, yes, we're so mysterious. Um, so come help us do the Writers of Meaning project. Cheer us on. Help us with reviews. You know, all that fun stuff I'm supposed to say at the end that I can't remember right now. So, yeah, we're just figuring this out as we go. <laughs> Well, thanks to everybody for watching, and thank you, Jordan and Josh, for coming on so late. I know it's late for you guys right now. Um, this is Writers of Meaning, behind the scenes, unplugged, being real with you folks. And uh, we thank you for watching, and um, in uh, no macaronis were heard in the filming of this episode. And that's a wrap.